Whereas you, I believe, have lifeboats to pointlessly squabble over. I believe you did. Although I was wearing the face of an elf at the time. I had a mask, rather ingeniously designed, which allowed me to take that primitive form. A mask that was stolen by that damned witch after her little scene. Still, she'll drown with the rest of these fools, and I will simply pluck my mask from her cold, dead hands. The skeleton holds up his book in one quick, frustrated movement. I am trying to discover if there is anyone worth saving. And I will be damned if I let the lives of some mayflies get in my way. Go on, go. Swim or drown or do whatever takes your fancy. I have a book.
children and dwarfs first, just like the old stories say. The dwarf yanks at one of the nearby ropes to no avail. the people down there. We... we need to help them. You see those tentacles, kid? It's time for getting the hell out of here. Magister lies on the floor, unconscious and bleeding from a dire-looking wound. Broken. faced worse. Hmm. Let the games begin. I'm ready! They who are about to try out the salute. Bugs won't sink the ship on my watch.
for some air. Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard are presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity, High Judge Oriven. Those void woken made short bloody work of the ship. Am I the lone survivor? This must be Fort Joy.
The child has a small mirror in his hands. He holds it up at angles, inspecting his eyes, his chin, the crown of his head. He spots you and his arms snap to his sides. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Why? But... Are you a sorcerer? One of those guys that brings the bad void things here? The child looks at you straight on, unafraid, searching your face. He lifts his mirror to his nose, closes one eye, and looks at himself again. I don't see any sauce on you or me. I guess they're wrong or crazy. No one cares where I go. They know I can't leave the island. It's nicer out here than inside anyway. But you didn't die. I guess I am, but it's just normal to be scared. Nowhere isn't scary. There isn't anywhere safer. That's what I mean. You'll see.
Guards were supposed to keep those things at bay.
you spot a strange lizard gazing over the water with a steady, malcontent stare. His skin is of a bright blood-red colour. Could he be...? Yes, you recognise him from the ship. It would seem you're not the only one who survived the tentacles of the deep. The lizard turns about with the graceful ease of a dancer, or a duelist. You lock eyes with his, two smouldering embers that sizzle your very soul. I did survive, yes. And chances are I wouldn't have, had you not returned to the aid of your fellow passengers down in that dreadful hold. You have my gratitude. Hand over heart, he salutes you with a bob of the head. More than a nod, though less than a bow. Yes, I'm sure you've all the makings of a hero and all that, but let's not get carried away, shall we? Nevertheless, one good turn does deserve another, so as far as the whole slave business is concerned, let's just forget about it. You may as well have your freedom. Now then, if there's nothing further... If you really must know, I haven't quite decided yet. I have a frightful amount of things on my mind, hence my standing here contemplating the waves. He sighs dramatically. Tell me. What do you see when you cast your glance over this ocean? Memories. Quite so. He looks out over the water once more, and so do you. A few tranquil moments pass as the waves lap against your thoughts. As for myself, when I consider this vast expanse before us, I see an empire. I see continents dotted with mighty cities. And shimmering along the soft curve of the sea's horizon, I picture the palaces that formed my paradise. Lost. What do you mean, what do I mean? I mean just what I say. I had a very actual empire that I lost. Suddenly, having all the air of being deeply offended, he stares at you with utter incredulity. Well, don't just stand there gawking like an ape at an abacus. Or do you really mean to tell me you don't know who I am? The very same. I am the Red Prince, the All Conqueror, the World Tamer, the Spouse of the Sun. Of course you know me. There's a brief moment's pause, during which his grandiloquent pose deflates ever so slightly. That said, I suppose I must own up to the fact that I find myself rather in between all-conquering and world-taming opportunities at the moment. The grandeur that is my fate has a hit a bit of a snag. But never you worry. For the throne I was destined, and my throne I shall have. Truly. A kind offer indeed. And you've already proven to be trustworthy enough. You came back for the others on that ship, after all. Fine. I accept. On one condition. For reasons I'll not disclose right now, it is imperative that I should meet with a dreamer, one of the mystics of my kind. I've reason to believe one of them may be present on this island. Promise me we'll look for him, and I'll extend you the blessing of my company.
jolly good. So, now that that's settled, first things first. Even if you are as versed in the art of eloquence as I am, that our swords will be doing a lot of the talking from here on out it goes without saying. As a born fighter, I prefer the perfection of the blade myself, but I'm well acquainted with the secrets of magic and, yes, even subterfuge. What say you? Very well. Onwards then to victory or death. The Red Prince nods and gives you a smile that wavers ever so delicately between courtesy and contempt. Now, as you're away, you'll be travelling with a prince. Proper forms of address include Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, or, or if you're feeling particularly frivolous, my lord. As your luck would have it, I seem to be fresh out of luggage, so you won't be required to carry my belongings. Of course, there are other forms of protocol to bear in mind, but I'll see to it you'll pick up the rest as we go. So, without further ado, let us be off! <laughs> 